Did you know that Leeds had its very own Angel of Death serial killer? Today I'll tell you the story of Colin Norris. Norris was a very angry man. From his school report saying he was very angry and confrontational, his university saying his behaviour was unacceptable because of his aggressive nature and fiery temper. He was always getting angry with lecturers and university staff. He did qualify as a nurse and ended up working in Leeds. His nature was soon noticed. He had a terrible attitude towards older patients and often refused to work with them. Very unusual for someone who wanted to be a nurse to not have a caring nature. Fell out of favour with pretty much all senior staff and experienced colleagues. Later, he would even admit to the police that he couldn't work with elderly patients, stating that he couldn't put up with their smell. This terrible attitude was noticed but not really acted upon. So the problems of him working with the elderly started way before he'd even become a fully qualified nurse. He seemed to be getting away with a lot in these early days. He once got caught stealing drugs from the pharmacy and didn't even lose his job. At the time of the murders, he'd only been in the job a year, working between two hospitals, Leeds General Infirmary and St. James University Hospital in Leeds. Suspicions were soon raised when he predicted Ethel Hall would become ill around 5.15am. Despite Mrs Hall having no underlying conditions or any complicated medical procedures coming, at 5am that morning she became gravely ill and sadly passed away only a few weeks later. As she became ill, nurses rushed to help her. Norris grabbed the attention of everybody by tapping his watch and saying, told you and exclaimed it's always in the mornings when something goes wrong and somebody always dies when I'm on nights when the police questioned him about this he just said he'd been unlucky but everybody's suspicions had been raised and the police launched an investigation in all 72 cases were investigated but only four were pinned on Norris Alongside Ethel Hall, Irene Crooks, Bridget Burke and Doris Ludlam had also died at the hands of Norris and were all in the first year of him working as a nurse. The potential to have more victims out there and his absolute lack of remorse meant that he's got a life sentence with the minimum tariff of 30 years. He's currently serving it in HMP Franklin home to some of the most notorious UK prisoners. Norris launched an appeal in 2009, but it was pretty soon rejected. Justice Lord Aitkins ruled the conviction as safe, and instead of allowing the appeal, it was rejected, and he stated the original investigation was exemplary, flawless. An independent inquiry in 2010 looked into the investigation and noted that Dundee University didn't flag up his poor attitude towards the elderly and aggressive nature in their, in their references to future employers. It was also noted that he attended many lectures on the treatment of diabetes with insulin. A case study during his education pointed out the 1974 case of Jessie McTavish, a nurse convicted then cleared of the murder of an 80 year old patient with an overdose of insulin. It's thought this is how he got his inspiration for injecting his four victims with an overdose of insulin. Two years previous to Norris becoming a nurse, Dr Harold Shipman was convicted of killing 250 of his patients. Again, this was thought to have played a part in the way he killed his victims. Lead detective on the Shipman case, Superintendent Chris Gregg also led the Norris investigation and believes if he wasn't caught in his tracks, there would be many more victims. Thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next one.